Hey man, I'm up camping. Imagine that. I gotta love it. Uh, I was I was up here yesterday. <laughs> I guess I can't get enough of it. Well, anyway, last night uh, I got a knock at our door, and um, and a neighbor brought this this uh, strawberry pie. This thing was. Like this, that pie had to be this thick, man. It was awesome. <laughs> but anyway, it's a neighbor from a couple, couple uh, blocks down from where we're at, and uh, they, but um, well, they got to talking and everything, and says, "Hey, where's your truck?" I said, "Well, it's broke down. Still working on it, changing out parts, you know." If you saw my video last week, the, the uh, hail hailstorm video, uh, you would have seen in there. I made a mention of it being broke down. So, you know, about an hour later, my doorbell rings and a guy comes and I open the door and this neighbor hands me a key and said, he said, well, here, you can drive a Cherokee or whatever. Drive it however long you need till you get your truck fixed up. But man, that's pretty awesome. Well, one thing I did realize halfway up here was that I think I forgot my propane. So I got a propane stove, but no propane. And uh, so I thought, well, if I could get into this spot, I'd go ahead and have me a fire. I'll fix up that fire pit, make it nice, dig it out a little bit. A little bit of a fire hazard out here now. If there's a forest fire, I can see the smoke from it right over the hill up here. And I think I'll sleep back in here about 100 feet back is a, um, where I filmed a little video yesterday on uh, an ultralight, uh, ultralight uh, tarp kit for ponchos. I see this pallet right here. And um, I think I'm going to take it and set it over uh, right in there somewhere. Take these two before scraps here and stack them up and raise this thing up to kind of make a little table. I think with all four of these and setting it down there, it ought to be pretty, pretty stable. You put this on there, I think I need one more right there. So the trick is, can I put it on here without tipping everything over? Uh, well, let's see if we can put her down here and not tip everything over. Looks like I gotta do a little bit of adjusting, but. Well, I got my table, my seat, my whatever it is set up. Pretty sturdy, good shape. Time to bring out the rest of the stuff. So in this bag here, I have an ultralight multicam silk nylon 1.130 poncho that we can't get anymore. It's an old one I've got. I'm going to use that as my canopy cover. I brought my ultralight uh, tarp kit for ponchos. So today I'm going to use these. Uh, this is Dyneema cord with eye. That's how it appears on our on our uh, website. So it's got an eye in one end, and then it's just a just a cord. Winds up giving you about 10 feet of straight cord. One thing I wanted to use this for is it allows me to be closer between trees than I could be with whoopee slings and shuttle slings and all that sort of thing. It's easier to hook my little my little knife and building key on the end of the eye right there, and then let gravity do the work. Why should I work when gravity will, you know what I mean? Gravity doesn't charge me anything or whatever, so. There we are, look at that. <laughs> We're already, already out the other end here. There we are. I put an extra large key, uh, split ring key ring on there just for the purpose of being able to easily hook into parachute cord or Dyneema to uh, run it through the ponchos to turn them into hammocks. All right, well, we're up. It's simple. 
Some people tell me, well, you can't tie knots in Dyneema, but it works good. And I'm around the tree, two half inches, done. It ain't going anywhere. Well, let's see what we got here. Woo, it's hot. So this is uh, turkey breast, Sam Pete County style. And I'm cooking the, uh, cooking the turkey in its own marinade. And I added a, added a little bit of water and that to it, but the seasoning of the marinade is excellent. You're just boiling there. And so what I've done here is I've got a point of three rocks right here and filled in with coals in the middle. And then just set the pan on there. And, uh, and that's my that's my stove right there. So that's the way I roll right there. I believe it's eating time. Great, great night sleep. It rained all night except for about the last hour or so this morning and uh, rain, thunder, and man, I was, I was inside there snug as I could be. We had some times like when it thundered, man, it would just that rain was just coming down. We don't have that fabric available, the multicam. But it's the same thing as our Super UL uh, that we have now. We just don't have the multicam pattern. But, uh, and that's a, that is a uh, PSS XL size, so it's nine feet long. And underneath inside of there is, is, is another hammock or a poncho. And that's also a ultralight, and that's the real tree extra. But that's a PSSL, so it's a foot shorter than the one I have on top. The out inside, I put a beast torso size inside to lay on, which was really nice. Um, temperatures got down in the 40s, and it got quite windy, especially with that rain and storm. That torso beast underneath really did the trick, man. I didn't feel a bit of cold, nothing. And then I got a Osni narrow blanket that I laid over the top of me. I didn't even snap it in. I just laid it over me, and that was that was plenty warm. Uh, my canopy I secured to the. It's basically tied off to the same suspension line that holds the hammock up. I really like that. Uh, I think that's a nice way to go when you're covering a when you're covering a hammock. Pulling my corner stakes and everything down it kind of pulls it down but i still got i still have enough headroom right in the middle just enough to sit up even with something as small as a poncho being my canopy i still i still have plenty of width i still have plenty of coverage i never got a drop of of anything on me so i was really good I just tied the end off right here kind of as a drip, kind of a drip cord so any water that hits the string and runs down will hit that and drip to the ground instead of running down to the hammock. So now it's time to get me some fire going for a little bit of breakfast. This log's not very sturdy. <laughs> well, we split into here a little bit so he has some dry center wood. Try this. That's a little tall. <laughs> but it does the trick. Give me some little sticks here. Well, there's my little pile. And, uh, 
that should be sufficient to get me started here. Here's a piece of uh, saturated wood here. I'm having a brain freeze. Can't even remember the name of it. Everybody knows what it is. Anyway, fatwood. Fatwood, that's what it is. So you get this thing going a little bit. And I'm just going to lay it in here. All this, all this uh, charcoal wood here and everything will, will burn pretty nicely. I'll just bring my Bring all this little stuff I've chipped up here. Now one thing I found is whenever you can, if you can get a chimney started. What seems to happen is you're and the nice thing is see we've got split edges here. We're putting them in there. When you stock a chimney, it starts to create a draw, and uh, you find that that flame, even though it's small, it'll mingle up through everything. I could make the chimney a little tighter chimney, I suppose, but that'll be all right. But all these edges here are edges that I recently split so they'll accept that flame pretty easily I don't need to go any higher I'm just I'm just playing Jenga now <laughs> why am I doing this I don't know why they will burn I'll just scatter some of the rest of the stuff around. So I use fat wood as a candle basically. And uh, so here we are, you know, wood that's laying out in the rain all night, split it open. And uh, you know, that's, that's my kind of fun right here. I'm kind of an oddball. I do things different than most people. And I'm daggum proud of it wood kind of around the little Jenga tower and uh, as this thing goes, heck, that piece right there is already starting to burn it's coming along my Jenga pieces in the middle are burning nicely fully engulfed and all the wood around the perimeter is starting to catch even though that wood's been wet through the night you can see right here, see the, the moisture that's in that wood is starting to boil out. So you can, you can see how wet the wood is, but it's still uh, working very nicely. There's enough heat there to begin drying that out, and, and some of the surfaces there are starting to burn. There's a shot right down the chimney. So there you go. Just a fun little fire. You gotta tinker around a little bit at camp. It's no fun doing stuff the same thing all the time. Some water for something hot to drink this morning. So, that's what I love about these little can clean canteens here. Shove it right in there. That thing will be boiling in no time at all. Well, there we are, 40 ounces of water in four minutes. I would call that, I would call that a pretty vigorous boil. So here's my morning drink. Hazelnut chocolate and Pero. About half and half. That tastes awful good, I'll tell you what, I really like it. This stuff's barely sippable right now. <laughs> Pretty hot. 
but I still do it even though like I'm risking burning my whole mouth out. I don't know why, it's like I just still gotta sip it. I don't know, there's something the, like the flavor seems different when you're sipping and it's so hot it's like dangerous. <laughs> you know, to me some of the simple things are the pleasures in life, the pleasures out camping. A lot of times on TV they got some fantastic thing they're doing, but you know, sitting here in the morning before the sun's come up over the trees here and having a nice fresh hot fire, having something good and hot to drink, and just sitting here, you know, I mean, it's, I was just, it's simple, but it's nice, it's comfortable. I'm kind of looking up over the hill to the north of me here and I'm not seeing the smoke that I was seeing yesterday. Maybe we got enough rain to put that fire out. Some that might criticize me for for this, I don't know, saying I need to be more bushcraft or something, I don't know. But I think it is bushcraft because I came into this camp and what I found here, I've been using. You know, I used the, the scrap trim in two by fours as legs for the table. Nobody had burnt the, t the pallet up yet, so I thought I'd rather use it as a table than burn it. There's plenty of wood around here to burn, so why burn the pallet? So, tell me what you think in the comments. You think this is still okay for bushcraft? I mean, I think bushcraft is Everybody, oh, it's all primitive, but I think really the essence of bushcraft is, you know, making use of what's what you got around you. Now it's the perfect sippable temperature. Now there's something about when you slurp that, you sip that up and it froths it all up as it comes into your mouth. Just fills your whole mouth with the flavor, man. It's, <laughs> you know what I mean. So this is my friend John's Jeep, his hunting Jeep. And uh, you now here where we live, you don't want to have a shiny, you don't have a shiny new Jeep or truck to go hunting in. Because so much of the area you get out into, you know, it rips stuff off of it when you're going through, scrapes it up. You know, ideally you just want something that runs, it's four wheels and a, engine man you, you just want to get there that was the led light bar there last night holy cow that thing lit up the whole forest i was going to take a video of it and uh i don't started raining it had been just sprinkling all of a sudden it started coming down so i abandoned the plan and i just decided just jumped into bed and went to sleep you know i, I just think that i really love this setup man i mean i like i like the lines of that that's a PSS XL poncho, poncho in the, uh, that's basically Super UL. It's on our website. That pattern isn't, that's a multicam, they don't make it anymore. But anyway, and in the rain last night, that was so nice. The rain, you could hear it just pouring down on you and you're dry as a bone in there. That canopy right there is like 12 ounces. And my, my poncho that I'm using for the, Hammock is about 12 ounces. I don't think I dare swing on this thing. I don't I don't think that's made for somebody of my weight to swing on. <laughs> I think this is for kids. <laughs> so, I don't know. Anyway, let's get some more wood on the fire. You know one thing, once you got a good fire going, you can even use some green wood like that. And you kind of blend it a little bit. These Quakies, I don't know, it's kind of a soft wood. You get in a storm and oftentimes they'll fall over, break off and fall over and stuff. So in a Quakey forest, you always got some green wood that's out. It doesn't start very well, but if you got a fire already going, it'll burn. It's kind of slow burning, which is kind of nice because it helps extend your fire a little bit because it doesn't burn very fast. It's got to burn all that moisture out of it. 
Hey, I'm gonna just uh, set my cast iron pan in there by the fire so it can kind of start preheating. It's gonna be a while before I can really cook, and I don't care. I'm not in a big hurry. I got all day. Waiting on the fire, that's a pleasant activity, I think. thing I usually do in the camps that I go to is I like to clean them up a little bit. Somebody had this campfire Jenga game here called XL Stackers. But they left the, all the box for it just laying on the ground here so I'll burn it up. So look at that. I barely put that on. It's already boiling. We have some intense fire here. I'm a, man, I tell you, I don't know. I really love fire. <laughs> I'm like addicted. I like to look in there, you know. Like look back, ooh. I can't get too close. I'll melt the darn camera on my fingers. But back in that hole in there, that in, inferno inside of there. I like to stare down in there and watch it burn. Am I weird? Yeah, I'll put it in the comments. My where do you do this kind of stuff? Stare at the fire. I don't understand all that stuff really, but I guess it kind of is. Because it's, you know, I designed the stuff we have and look how foamy that is. <laughs> That's awesome. But you know, I, I designed the gear. And it, it is about me because the gear is what I like, you know, I guess. Like I never went out and did some investigation like you're supposed to. Figure out what do people want, you know. I never did that. I never went out and like did all this market research. Figuring out what do people want. What are they, what's the deal, you know. I mean... What I did with our gear is, I just made stuff I like, stuff. But really, it's all based on what do I like, what, what seems to work for me. So I don't use other equipment, I use what we make. So if I don't like it, it doesn't happen. How ugly that cup is, you know? I mean, See that? This is me, man. This is me. <laughs> I mean, you got people out out there and they're making stuff and they'd everything would be clean and pristine, you know, flawless. That's not me, man. I'm real. This is the way I go. It's the way I rock. The way I roll. It's my life. And I just show it. I don't care. I enjoy my time, man. And I hate to waste it. Now, see, some people say sitting here like this is wasting your time. I don't know. Not to me. I'm weird. But, you know, tell me what you think in the comments at the bottom of the video, you know. Do you like to just sit here? and Or do you like to always be going? And, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with being going and going and... But I, I go all week. I mean, seriously. This this business takes every, little or everything I got to keep it going. Well, that right there is some cooking, cooking coals and stuff here. So I'll put the bigger pieces. Whoo, that is hot. Put the bigger pieces up there. there that, that is just... That is too hot to even have my hand down there, I'm telling you. But these are all wool gloves, so they're pretty good for handling the situation. Let's pepper it up real good. 
I'm in a mood for some spice here. Put them in this pan here, which is fairly warm. That'll keep them from getting cold right there. Well, while I still got some remains of the fire, just gonna dust off the top. The top kind of cools down. As soon as you disturb the coals at all, I mean, it is just like roasting. So what I want to do is I've got a half a dozen eggs here, and I want to uh, kind of just push it down in there just a little bit. So what I want to do is hard boil those, then boil in a little bit. Whew. Still going, I think we're good. Well, last week at my, uh, at my shop, my sister and her husband showed up and he brought me this 30-06 bolt action. I mean, it's nothing fancy, but it's kind of cool that he gave it to me just because, I don't know, he bought this when he was, I think he said 18 years old. I guess it's kind of cool that he gave it to me just because, you know, I mean, it's kind of maybe sentimental, you know, something you had since you're a teenager and, you know, and he's a, he's a mill he's a veteran. He got some, he got some injuries and junk and stuff, but, you know, and he struggles at times with things, but he's a good guy, man. I'll tell you, he'd, he'd do anything for anybody. I'll tell you what, kind of. I haven't, I haven't ever shot this yet, so hopefully sometime today I'll head over here somewhere, find me a spot, and fire it off a few times, see what it's like. 